Thanks for joining me, David Wise, Wise Up Productions, on another wild, spine-tingling tale out of Miami-Dade County. Film buffs, especially Scarface fans, like myself, will have no problem recognizing this very famous scene shot in front of what used to be, when I was a kid, Sunray Apartments, located on one of the most famous streets in the entire world, Ocean Drive in Miami Beach, 305 Forever. This building is currently a CVS pharmacy. Before that, it was a Johnny Rockets, as well as a modeling agency. I know this area very well, as you can see here, my son and I exploring this location back in 2018. This is the famous chainsaw scene where Tony and his crew arrive to purchase some cocaina, cocaine, from a Colombian crew. He tells Manny, played by Stephen Dwyer, who, by the way, grew up in Miami-Dade County and, like my mother and Sylvester Stallone, he attended Miami-Dade where... You guessed it, he studied acting. During this scene, Tony Montana, played by Al Pacino, tells Manny and Chi-Chi, by the way, Chi-Chi is played by Angel Salazar, who I just spoke with a few days ago. He says, Okay, money stays in the trunk till I come out. You got that? Si. Me, nobody else. Si. Okay, I'm not out in 15 minutes, something's wrong. Okay, si. room nine. You ready? Sure. So Manny and Chi Chi wait in the vehicle while Tony and Angel walk to room nine to purchase the cocaine, the Yayo. Now, as Manny and Chi Chi are waiting in the convertible Chevy Impala, a young lady arrives and catches Manny's attention. He strikes up a conversation with her, tries to make some moves, and she walks away. This scene took place right here, where you see me pointing in this 2019 video. That young lady, in real life, her name is Tammy Lynn Liebert. And soon after filming this very famous scene, she would vanish, never to be heard from again. And the backstory to her disappearance is Bone chilling. Tammy was born in Rockledge, Florida on February 5th, 1965. And her upbringing kind of reminds me of Jean Benet Ramsey. Tammy's mother, Linda Curtis, was an agent in the area of theater. I've also read where she was a pageant coach and child modeling agent. Linda had Tammy take part in her first beauty pageant when she was four. And according to online sources, Tammy competed in over 400 competitions and won awards in 280 out of the 400. Tammy is 16 years old. Is five foot four and a half. Tammy's pageant competitions led her being cast in commercials and she appeared on the front of CoverGirl magazine in October of 1978. Living with Tammy and her mother was one of Linda's child clients, Wing Flanagan, who had lived with them since he was 11 years old. So Wing and Tammy were like brother and sister growing up in the same house. Tammy pursued acting and played minor parts in Little Darlings, Spring Break, and of course in 1983, Scarface. Though she was only on screen a short time, the scene she was in was very famous still to this date. Scarface has a huge following, and the Sunray Hotel scene is probably the most talked about part in the film next to, Say hello to my little friend. It's been stated that Tammy, if she stayed on track with her career, would likely have gone on to be a big Hollywood star. Unfortunately, 
this would never happen. And the dark clouds began to surround Tammy's life after the movie Spring Break completed filming. And a party took place, which Tammy attended. What happened at this party would change her life forever. No one knows for sure what occurred. Or does someone know? When Tammy returned home to her mother after filming Spring Break and after attending this party, she was a completely different human being. Tammy would routinely break out into fits of paranoia and extreme terror. She would not eat certain foods out of fear of being poisoned, would not leave the house alone. She stated to her mother, hey mom, what would you say if I told you somebody was trying to kill me? Tammy's mother asked if this was true, and Tammy replied, yes. This caused Linda to be sick with worry for Tammy. When Linda would try to get Tammy to elaborate, Tammy would tell her mom that she could not tell her anything because they would kill her. I wonder who Tammy was referring to when she said they. Tammy witnessed something horrific at this party. She stated to her mother that she witnessed something that she was not supposed to see. I wonder what that something was. Tammy's behavior grew worse as time moved on. She stayed mostly secluded in her bedroom, away from everyone. Uh, Tammy once expressed concern to Wing Flanagan, and that's the gentleman that lived with them since he was 11 years old. And he was kind of like a brother to her. And she expressed concern to him over a van across the street. The neighbors had bought a new van. And this is where she was really sinking. And that van had mirror tent on it. And she told Wing, did you notice the van across the street? It's got mirror tent. That means they can see us, but we can't see them. During this time, Tammy found out that she was chosen to take part in Scarface. She would travel to Miami for filming and stay with a family friend, Walter Leibowitz, until her scenes were complete. While on set, Tammy watched the crew film a shootout scene that included fake blood. I have a very good idea of what scene Tammy observed, due to the part she played. The Sunray Hotel scene, by the way, in real life it was Sunray Apartments at the time. They changed the name to Hotel for the movie. But that scene included a shootout that began in the hotel room and ended on Ocean Drive, right in front of where Tammy's scene was filmed. Lots of times when actors are finished with their parts, they can observe filming out of camera view in a different location on set. The Sunray Hotel chainsaw shootout scene ended when Tony Montana shoots the Colombian Hector the Toad in the head. And of course, there is fake blood splatter. And when the camera captures this scene from a distance on Ocean Drive, it's not actually the actor, Al Israel, who played Hector the Toad. It is a dummy hooked to wires controlled by a special effects crew member. The special effects gentleman detonates the dummy's head to make it appear he just took a bullet from Tony's gun. Instead, the head contained the fake blood. If you watch this scene frame by frame, especially in 4K, you can clearly tell it's a dummy. It looks like a, a wax figure. The scene is pretty graphic. I believe, though I've, I've heard people talk about her seeing the scene and having her freak out, but no one ever has elaborated, to the best of my knowledge, that I'm aware of, of what scene it was. And this is my guess, it was this scene. But after seeing this, she completely freaked out. Her panic attack was so intense that she had to be taken to her trailer due to un 
uncontrollable screaming. The staff on set thought she might get a hold of herself and calm down while in the trailer, but she did not. She kept screaming, they are going to kill me. Walter Leibowitz had to respond to Tammy's trailer and remove her from the set. While Walter was speaking with Tammy, she brought up money laundering, and there was no place for her to hide. Whatever Tammy witnessed at that party came back to her like a Vietnam veteran when she saw the shootout being filmed. Walter called Linda and advised her what happened on the set of Scarface and what Tammy stated in her comments while she was screaming. Walter suggested medical attention and contact with law enforcement. I have to wonder if Tammy was scheduled to be in more scenes in Scarface, because after her episode of Tara on set, she quit and never returned. If that was the only scene she was picked for, she wouldn't have to quit. She would be finished. That tells me there may have been some future appearances throughout other scenes in the movie, maybe as a different character in the Babylon Club scene or something along those lines that the filmmakers wanted to use her in. Don't know that for certain. I'm just guessing. So, according to people familiar with these events, Tammy did make contact with law enforcement, but left details out such as her life being in danger. Wing Flanagan stated that after the Scarface incident, one day she went outside to look around for a brief moment. When she attempted to go back inside, she realized she was locked out. This sent Tammy over the edge, and she went into another horrific panic and started busting windows on the house. Once she came back in the house, she lashed out at Linda and Wing. Linda grabbed Tammy and kept repeating, I love you, I love you, until she calmed down. When I would hear about this story through the years, I thought maybe she was introduced to narcotics at the party she attended, but I'm not sure if drugs were the problem. Because after Tammy's panic episode, she was checked into the Brevard County mental health center. Tammy was held for 72 hours for a psychological evaluation and was tested for narcotics. The narcotics test was negative, but I've heard, and I don't know if this is true or not, if anybody is watching this video and they know for sure, please add it to the comments. If Tammy's sister happens to see this video, maybe you could clear this up. But, like I said, I don't know if this is true or not, but I heard that Tammy found out she was pregnant while she was in the facility, or maybe even later. But, like I said, that's just something I heard. I've never had that confirmed. I don't know if that's true or not. That's just something I've heard through the years uh, when I would uh, people would tell me the stories about what happened on the set of Scarface, and when I would, you know, which caused me to want to read about it and research it, because it was such an amazing story. Tammy was released from the facility. Following her release, Tammy again mentioned to her mother that she was still in danger and made her mother promise to get revenge should anything happen. Revenge? Revenge on who? Did she ever further elaborate to her mother? How would her mother know who to get revenge on? I don't think her mother ever elaborated on who that person was, or if Tammy even told her at all. Tammy met up with a high school friend, Rick Adams. Adams advised that she told him she saw something she was not supposed to see, and someone was out to kill her. What did Tammy see at this party? What happened to her at this party? that was so traumatic that it changed her life forever. When Rick dropped Tammy off at her residence, Tammy told Rick, I just want you to know 
I may have to go away for a while, but I also want you to know that I love you. That was the last time Rick would ever speak to Tammy. On Wednesday, June 6th, 1983, Linda heard a car honk from in front of her residence. Tammy walked from the living room to the door and stated she would be back in a bit. Linda had a cold chill run down her spine. She could sense something was wrong. She stated that Tammy left the house without combing her hair and fixing up like she would normally do. Linda stated that was very abnormal and out of character for Tammy. Linda went outside and saw Tammy leaving in a vehicle with Keith Roberts and felt in her heart that she would never see her again. And she was right. Tammy never came home. And law enforcement was notified five days after she left and treated the case as a runaway due to Tammy being 18 years of age at the time and left the residence on her own free will. Linda stated that Tammy was afraid of Keith. Keith told authorities that Tammy called him that morning and asked him to pick her up. After doing so, they drove around Cocoa Beach. Tammy, and this is according to Keith's story, had told him she was unhappy at home and about her mother checking her into a mental hospital. Keith stated that Tammy asked him for money, and he gave her money. He gave her $300. He stated that Tammy also asked for a ride to Fort Lauderdale, and he stated that was too far, and he did not have the time for the drive. So he offered to drive her back to her house. Now this is according to what Keith said. This suggestion, according to Keith, upset Tammy. They argued and she yelled at him to stop the vehicle. He stated that he dropped her off in a parking lot. Tammy made some unsuccessful phone call attempts, most likely from a payphone, her Aunt Ginger's costume shop, and her friend Ron, who I've heard had a video shop in the area, I guess like to rent VHS and Beta back then, but both of the parties missed her call. Uh, neither Ginger nor Ron uh, received her call. They missed it. Linda stated that Tammy was supposed to be traveling to California in reference to acting in some movies. Tammy's disappearance has a multitude of scenarios and what-ifs attached to it. Detective Harold Lewis out of Cocoa Beach stated, that a lady called him twice, once stating that Tammy was alive and would make contact when the time was right or something like that. The same lady also stated that Tammy was pursuing her dream of becoming a nurse. To the best of Linda's knowledge, Tammy never told anyone that she wanted to be a nurse. This case caught the attention of the hit TV show, Unsolved Mysteries, and they aired a segment dedicated to Tammy's disappearance. Some say there's a chance Tammy was murdered by Australian-born serial killer Christopher Wilder. Christopher Wilder is known to have been responsible for the abduction and rape of approximately 12 women and murdered eight. Wilder would lure women by offering them modeling contracts I've heard that Tammy's mother, Linda, said that she saw Wilder at her agency more than once. I've also heard that Linda filed a lawsuit against Wilder, uh, but when the police did not have any evidence that he was involved, she dropped it. Later, Wilder was killed during a shootout with the police in New Hampshire, and this took place the following year, 1980. There's been rumors that she was a victim of sex trafficking. She ran away and changed her identity. She was severely mentally ill and suffered from delusions. And the list goes on and on. I have heard just a multitude of rumors and stories connected to Tammy, uh, including certain celebrities that dealt drugs on set. So many people have not heard about the story. It's been said, now I don't know if this is true or not, 
But I also heard one time that uh, the producers of the TV show Unsolved Mysteries were told by investigators in the area not to share any leads they had with Linda. Did they have leads at the time? If so, what were they? The Vampire Rapist. Here's another rumor that was circulating. The Vampire Rapist, John Crutchley, possibly killed at least 30 women. Crutchy got his nickname after he killed a woman in Orlando, Florida, and drank her blood, hence the vampire rapist. John would later commit suicide in prison in 2002. Police did not ever make a connection between John and Tammy. There was rumors that Tammy had knowledge of some major players in the drug and money laundering game. These major players knew this and made sure she never spoke about it. And for those of you that lived in Florida during the 80s, especially Central and South Florida, it was a very wild time. Money laundering and the drug business was just booming. And there was a lot of craziness in that area. So the rumors are endless, the stories are endless, the possibilities are endless. Linda passed away on October 4th, 1995. She was 54 years old. She never found out what happened to Tammy, which was her dying wish. Tammy's sister, Suzanne, is still actively looking for Tammy. I encourage anyone who may be watching this video that may know something or have some kind of usable information in reference to her disappearance to please contact the Cocoa Beach Police Department. Check out Suzanne's Facebook page. That's Tammy's sister. Uh, you can search it on Facebook, My Missing Sister, Tammy Lieber. Forensics and Missing Persons Organizations have produced an age progression image of Tammy. The question still remains, what happened to Tammy Lynn Lieber? And things that don't seem so good are the best, but I'll do my best no matter what.